it's Nicole welcome back to my channel in today's video I'm gonna show you an unboxing that I got from my friend Maria and um, she sent me an orchid that she asked me if I wanted to rehab it and bring it back to health it's one of those that she's been struggling with so I happily accepted and um, she also sent me some Hoyas so I'm gonna unbox them with you and I also want to do something else in this video which is I got some Hoyas from Maria and Paula Marsh from Hillbilly Orchids about a month ago and I started rooting them up in sphagnum moss so I thought it'd be cool to show you how those are doing and get them potted up so I kind of want to show you how I plan on rooting them and I have some that I started rooting a month ago that are already rooted so I'm going to break this video into two parts we're going to do the unboxing, then I'm going to set these up to put roots. So I'm going to wrap them in sphagnum moss or water. And then I'm going to show you the ones that I have put into sphagnum moss. And we will get them potted up properly. So this way you guys have some continuation and see how it worked out. Let's jump right in. Okay, so I took everything out of the box. I think these are the Hoyas, and I wasn't expecting three. She told me she was sending one, so I'm so curious to see what's inside of these. But let's start with the orchid. So this is the rescue. So this one is the Potanera Hawaiian Prominence America. And I have one that's a hybrid of this one. That one's not doing too hot right now. I think it has a virus, so... It's, I've been struggling with that one, but I would like to give this one a go because I do like the fragrance on it. I like the color. It's like red with yellow on the inside, and I think it's beautiful. So, taking this out, this looks pretty good. She has it in sphagnum moss here, which is great. Oh my goodness, it has like a new little growth here. This doesn't look like a rescue at all. This looks pretty good. It's got a new growth. It's had some sheets there. Oh, this looks great. The moss is still like a little bit moist, which is perfect. I was ready to um, put it up already. And I think in my environment, it's actually, moss actually works out well because it's really hot right now and that's gonna dry really fast. And I find that bark just dries too fast. So I think I'm gonna leave it in this. This will work out well here. So this one is the Potanera Hawaiian Prominence America. Maria, this looks really good. So let's see what this one is. So I was not expecting multiple Hoyas. Huh. Interesting. This one is Hoya Hot Som Pei. Very interesting. Look at this. This is cute. Oh my gosh, this is a real rabbit hole. <laughs> Once you start, it's really hard to stop. So she sent it to me in this moist sphagnum moss. I'm going to leave it right there because that's how I actually set them up so they could start roots. I put them in a little Ziploc bag with sphagnum moss around the bottom stem. And I find that the humidity creates roots. Sometimes I put them in a Ziploc bag. I will show you at the end. So this is nice. I wonder what the flowers look like. Hoya hot sum pay. Lovely. I was not expecting that. Thank you, Maria. All right, let's move on to the next one. Okay, let's see what we got here. If you guys want to fast forward to getting these rooted, feel free. The timestamps are down below. Ooh. So this was the one I was expecting. This is the Hoya Mindarensis Red. She sent me the Hoya Mindarensis Yellow. And she put in this Ziploc as well. I'm going to leave it right there. And then what I do is I will keep the moss moist. But this is adorable. I'm going to show you guys the Mindarensis Yellow. It's rooted already just using this method here. So that was great. Excellent. And let me show you the last one. So here's the last one. I'm so excited for these. I was not expecting so much. Ooh, I don't have this. This is Hoya Matilde. I've seen this before. Adorable. And it's in this little Ziploc bag with 
moisture in here. So this is pretty much how I root them, guys. So I basically put them in sphagnum moss. So she's wrapped this up nicely. And then I just make sure that that stays moist. And in like a week or two, normally you have roots. You could also put it in a Ziploc bag. I like to keep the bag a little bit open so that no fungus or anything gets too crazy in there. And it's already humid here to begin with. And then in a couple of weeks, I check on it and I usually see roots coming out. So let me show you a couple of them so that I could show you the rooting method a bit more um, so you could see what it looks like. So here's one of the Hoyas that I um, rooted up in moss. I kept it in this like little tiny Ziploc bag, but I kept the top open. That's really important, at least in my environment because it's already humid and I don't want the leaves to get all messed up. So this one's a Hoya Mindarensis Gold. I accidentally called it the Hoya Mindarensis Yellow. And it's got roots already. So we put moss in there. And um, I don't know if you could see, but you could see there's some roots here that have popped out. So this is ready and this is all good to be potted up now. So I don't think I need to root this any longer. And just because we have roots here, we just have to be really careful when taking off the sphagnum moss because the sphagnum moss can break the roots. So I'm just going to be super, super careful. And I'm going to take these strands out little by little. It kind of also helps when you moisten this up a little bit more. So I'm actually going to wet this a bit further. Here we go. So I got it wet. You can see the roots popping in right there. They're white. We got a little algae that started growing in. This has been rooting for a month now. So we just want to be super careful. So when rooting Hoyas, you want to put them either in moss or you could put them straight up in water. I find that the woodier stem Hoyas are more difficult to root in plain water. So if you put them in like a Ziploc bag like I showed you, you tend to have more success because you get more um, humidity in there and it tends to produce more roots. So this is getting kind of tough to remove because the roots are all tangled in the strands of moss and I really don't want to break them. But as we tug it apart, it starts coming through. And you could leave some uh, sphagnum moss in there, but you don't want to leave too much because Hoyas, they kind of, they don't want to be suffocated by moss. A lot of times you put them in succulent mixes or something with good aeration. A lot of them grow well in Lekka, but Lekka, as you know, has air pockets, so it's not as soppy as this um, sphagnum moss. So you're starting to see that there are roots here. You can see them, they're just kind of buried in there, and this is enough to get this going. So I'm gonna get this off, and we are almost done here. And then we'll be able to throw it in uh, some soil. We could rinse that up and it's done. You can see it. You can see that root system is now ready. So I'm going to put that in a soil that has good aeration with good perlite or pumice. Let it drain. can also go in LECA, but if you have it in LECA, this will disintegrate. So you have to do a good job of removing it. If it's going in dirt, that's fine. Rather soil, that's fine. But you could also hose it down. Let me do that real quick. I got most of it off. This is good enough to get into the soil. Maybe you could use tweezers or something. But I just quickly wanted to show you how I root them. And this is ready to go. And it was basically in this little Ziploc bag and it pushed out this root system in about a month. So I'm going to come back later and we're going to start potting all of these up. So I'm going to show you updates on everything. Hey guys, I want to show you the others. So this one we took off yesterday and I'm going to pot this up just like that. I took out as much as I could. And then we have the Hoya Nune Yellow here. And I want to show you this Hoya Fichii. So this one was in a Ziploc bag. The humidity was up so much that roots started growing all up the stem. So this is a really good method. I also propagated some in water. So this one's the Hoya Curtisii, and you can propagate in water as well. I just find that the woodier stem ones can be difficult to propagate in water sometimes, so they can benefit from the added humidity of putting them in moss and a, um, a little Ziploc bag. 
but um, this one worked really well too. So these are all ready to be potted up. Unfortunately, this one didn't make it. This one's the Hoya Natalie. This one's struggling. So I, I put moss on the very bottom there and no roots really took off. Like there's two little nubs here. I think I let it dry too much one day and it never really came back. I'm gonna leave it here in moss and see if it makes a difference, but I don't know if it's gonna make it, but we'll see. It has two little tiny nubbins there, a couple more of them actually. So we're gonna give this another try. I will not be able to let this get dry. It has to stay moist, but that was my big mistake. I forgot to um, keep it moist one day and it just kind of shriveled here, but we'll see if we can get that going. On the flip side, this one I think I overwatered and it kind of rotted this over here. So this one is Hoya Chelsea. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut it probably around here and then try to put these in sphagnum moss and get new roots. This one already had a root system. It was small, but I think it just got too much water one day, um, but it just started um basically rotting here so we're gonna try again you can absolutely cut the stem here cut the vine rather and then new roots should propagate when you put moss on the bottom so we're gonna get this all done I'm gonna take the moss out of these first get started with the Hoya Curtisii so I have a mix that I created here with some potting soil I added some uh, bark in here and I added a good amount of uh, pumice to make sure it's like airy and make sure that it's good for um, Hoyas so a lot of times you can use like a succulent mix. There are Hoya specific mixes that are more well draining. So you treat these in general like um, a succulent when you're potting them up. Not all of them act like this. Some of them need more moisture like the Hoya Bella, but I just wanted to get some chunky stuff in here. So I'm going to take this little pot here and I'm going to pot up my little Curtisii. And we propagated this in water and some folks don't like to do that some people say that the roots are different when they're propagated in potting soil or moss versus water I haven't seen a difference because normally I probably I try to propagate in water with the exception of when I'm trying to use like a woodier stem one that is going into um, potting mix um, because those tend to be much harder for me to propagate in water. So if I put them in water, I put them in LECA normally. Um, but now I'm trying to move more towards potting mix because the LECA I find is very heavy for my um, hanging planters and I'm starting to put them on my windows. So that's why I've moved more to potting soil to just make it a little bit lighter. So we have this in here. And this is all set. I've already made a mess here. But we're gonna move on to the Mindorensis Gold. This is the root system. I tried to get as much moss off as I could without damaging the roots. And um, we're gonna have some leftovers, so I don't wanna pull anything off and break some of these roots. Maybe this little piece right here. But this should be okay. This looks good. So I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm just gonna fill up the pot and we're gonna do the same exact thing that we did with the Kurt TCI. You'll notice that this pot is pretty small. I think this is two and a half inches, maybe three inches if I'm not mistaken. And because the plant is so small, I wanna make sure that it's in a smaller pot. And um, these tend to like their roots a little bit more crowded and um, they do tend to do well. The only exception to that that I find is when I have them in LECA. Some of them I have in bigger pots. They seem to be doing just fine, but they've also, they also sometimes outgrow those pots so fast. And not even outgrow, but the roots just come out through the bottom and it's a lot. So these tend to grow a lot faster than my orchids. So I think in a year, I'm gonna have a big space problem with these. So I have to keep up with trellising them and vining them. And for now they're small, but we'll leave it be. So this one is the Hoya Mindorensis Gold. I don't know why I keep calling the, the Hoya Mindorensis Yellow. So that one's all set. And then let's do the um, Hoya Fichii. I have the same exact setup here. I'm looking forward to seeing how these grow in this setup. I of course covered it in soil already, but it's the same situation. 
Um, we're just gonna put this up in the middle and then we're gonna surround it by this uh, soil mix that I made. And we're getting soil all over the place, which I'm gonna clean up once we are all done with this one. Good to go. We add a little more. All good. So I'm out of pots, and I kind of want to use this one for the Nuna Yellow. This is the um, Hoya Chelsea that failed, unfortunately. So I'm going to cut this. This rotted here. So I'm going to cut it right here. And then we're going to get rid of that. And what we're going to do with this is we're going to try again. We're going to put sphagnum moss at the base. You see these little nubbins here? A lot of times uh, roots can push out from there. So we're gonna wrap this up and see what happens. And we're gonna keep this moist and just try again. So a lot of times if it fails, or if your plant looks like it's dying, um, this is a good way to try to bring it back. So we wrapped it up and then we're just gonna put it into a Ziploc bag to make sure there's good humidity there. We're going to check on that in a couple of weeks. So I'm going to do this and hopefully this works out. I will keep you updated. All right, so we have the Hoya Nuna yellow to go. So we're going to start with a bottom layer of our mix. I got a little bit more. So for the mix, I used about two thirds potting mix and then about a third of the bark and the pumice. So it is nice and airy, nice and chunky. Some folks like to grow these in coconut husk as well. I've never tried that, but I do grow some of my orchids in coconut husk. It's not my favorite, but it works out pretty well. It's not my favorite because it dries really fast in my environment. And it does work though. It does work nicely. When I can keep up with the watering, it's great, but I prefer something a little moist, more moisture retentive sometimes. But if you have husk with the um, with chunks of husk not shredded up, that's been my mistake. I shred it up too much, then that dries faster. Let me top this off a little bit more. And we are good. And we are all set with potting these up. So everything is all potted up and ready to go. So I think these could stay in these pots for about a year as they get bigger. The Curtisii, I'll let trail down. I may trim it a little bit and see if it could just um, push out some more vines and get bushier, but I'll let this hang from one of my shelves. This will take some time. I'm glad that they all have roots, but maybe in about a year I'll upgrade the pots, but as they get bigger, they're gonna need trellises and they'll definitely all be uh, quite large. Um, <laughs> I started growing these last January and I have some of them that are just beasts right now so they will definitely take up a lot of space. I ended up wrapping the Hoya Chelsea and the Hoya Natalie and I put them in little Ziploc bags so we're going to try again and see if those will push out roots but we're already seeing some new growths especially on the Nuna Yellow. It started pushing out new leaves while it was in the um, in the bag so that's new. This one will take some time to go. This has the roots and it's also, if you look a little closer, it also started pushing out a leaf while it was in the sphagnum moss. So that's great. And I find it hilarious that it pushed out all these roots here while it was in the Ziploc bag. And then the Curtisii, it started pushing out some new vines on the side. So I think these are gonna do well. I will water them as they dry and I will give you updates. Thank you guys so much for watching. I know that some of you guys don't grow Hoyas, but a lot of you do as well. They're very, uh, a lot of them flower, they're epiphytes just like orchids. So a lot of them, um, they flower, they have nice fragrance. And, and in the past year and a half, I've been really into them. So I'm running out of space. So I'm starting to put them in my windowsills and stuff. That windowsill is not the most ideal. I have some right here on my east facing windows and those are getting nice and big. So I'll need to do an update soon.
I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I will see you in the next one. Bye everyone.